Good evening and welcome to the January 8, 2018 meeting. Um, we're going to move right into a, a public participation segment of the um, agenda. And I don't believe there is any at this time. There are none, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Um, now, next item will be approval of the minutes, regular board meeting minutes of December 11, 2017. Some Moves Second. and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, approval of the minutes of the executive session of December 11, 2017. So moved. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, let us go into uh, public hearing section. Um, 7 o'clock is a uh, public hearing that was scheduled on the Chapter 138 concerning the alleged infractions by and possible discipline of Bear Island Corp. DBA Harrington's at 1719 Water Street. We have a letter here from um, Mr. McGreal uh, asking us to uh, continue the uh, hearing to um, another evening, and we are recommending that it be continued to 122 at 710. I believe we have to open the hearing in order to continue. Yes, the yes, yes. So yes. I move we open the hearing. Second. Second. That does not roll away. Yep. Roll. Aye. 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 I move we continue to our next meeting in two weeks. At 710. 710. 710 p.m. We have a second. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank I you very much. A public hearing. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Roll call. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. yes. Aye. yes. Aye. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Let's move this along, please. His daughter's here. Do we have a seven? Excuse me? Skip that one. Go there. National Grid continuation from uh, November 13, 2017. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, recommend that you open the public hearing and that you, again, extend it to our next meeting of January 22nd, um, 2018 at 7.30. Um, just in case, we, uh, we don't plan on having it that night. We plan on having this on the 12th of February, but if something were to happen from the siting board, it'll give us a mm -hmm. option. We'll be open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> we'll call. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Motion to continue to 122 at 7.30. Second. Move and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to close nope. the, oh, continue continue the, continue the good. public hearing. Continue is done. Uh, it's already done? Good. Yep. You just did it. Okay. You did it. <laughs> ah, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. No, you just continue. Just continue. Okay. Yeah. Just continue. Oh, okay. Just continue. Yep. Um, let's move to the, oh, we can't. Let's continue with the regular uh, items, the rest of the items on the agenda until we get to our 7.30 public hearing. So, uh, licenses and permits. Uh, renewal of <coughs> common victor's license. Unless there's discussion, I will entertain a motion to move the slate. So, so moved, but... Okay, yeah. Do we have a second? Yes. Do we have a second for discussion? Yes. Do you have any discussion on the... Simply that it seems like there have been no issues with the... No, people we are moving on. Uh, no one, and for the that. public at home, it's uh, Chai, Charm Thai Bistro, mm -hmm. Diamond Fortune Restaurant, Hobbs Brook Management, which is up at Audubon Road, Nick's Pizza, Slice Pizza, Subway, The Bread Shop, and Zuzu's Cafe. Perfect. And these are some of our stragglers that did not get their applications in in time, despite mm -hmm. the fact that they are end of October? Correct. Correct. That they are so... Just so everybody knows. Right. Is there a late fee charge? No, we do not charge a late fee. And we waive the late fee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, That's fine. A motion was made and second. The discussion was made. Any further comments? No. no. Um, may, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, may I please have a... Um, um, a motion to on the renewal of the class two licenses. Um, yeah, let's and again, no issues. Okay, excellent. Thank you. <laughs> I move we uh, approve this slate. We have a second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion on moving the slate on the class two licenses? No, I think it was good when we read them off. The okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, AC Auto, All State Truck Sales, Auto Annex, Diagnostic Motor Vehicle Inspection. Dix Foreign Car Service, Phil House Towing Inc., Modern Collision Center Inc., Tetris Collision, Wakefield Auto Sales. And again, these are also stragglers who were sent out at the end of October. We will uh, 
I tell you, uh, Sherry does a great job. She calls them, she emails them, she goes down and bangs on the door, and they're still late in getting them in. So, any further discussion? No. All in favor of moving the slate? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, there's a one day liquor license request, and I'm looking for that sheet right now, which I don't have in front of me, sir. Yep. Thank you. We have a one-day liquor license from Joanne Ragua yep. um, of 8 Curtin Lane, Reading, Mass, to use the Civic Center, Center Heritage Room. Heritage Room. Uh, she has the proper documentations here. Uh, she has the rental form and agreement filled out. Um, it's a rehearsal dinner. Um, this um, this building has been becoming much much more popular, which is what we wanted. Um, these people were lovely. They were thrilled to have this venue for their family. So, very nice. I move that we accept the grant the one-day liquor license for the woman you noted. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Carrying none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, we want to go into the uh, we have time yeah. for the have time. okay have presentation and action items. We have uh, request to advertise for bids for 138 from Salem Street. Everyone received in their packet um, diagrams and drawings and uh, comments from Mr. Rivas in regards to this piece of property. It's um, empty right now with a dilapidated garage on it, and it butts another person's property. Um, it's been uh, noted as uh, non-buildable, so um, they can only pr probably put another. Well, this is, is tax title property. What I would uh, suggest if the board would, we'll have to go out to bid, mm -hmm. meaning that interesting parties can uh, can bid to purchase it. Um, what, 138, sorry? 138, yeah. It's like a little garage yeah, right now. Right there, cool. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Sorry. Uh, it's right across from that um, convenience right store. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. Uh, the neighbor has... Um, well, the uh, way these all happen is that uh, some interested party sends in a letter requesting to look at it. Uh, the abutter has requested this. Um, what we do is we send it around to all the different apartments, making sure they don't have any um, you know, use for it. If we're going to use it for a pumping station, of course, we wouldn't sell it. Um, I think this is a case where uh, we can go out to bid. I would suggest that we do go out to bid, that the property be only used um, as it is now. Uh, for maybe an accessory building like that, that it not be combined with other land owned by anybody to um, make another additional buildable yeah. lot or something like that, and that um, it be a uh, there be no minimum bid, so we could accept or mm -hmm. deny whatever bid we wanted. And this has already been approved by the uh, Concom. Yes. So Concom has seen this; they are uh, fully aware of what it is, and yes. they have no complaints. Mr. Halvey. So how do you you put a deed restriction on that? Yes, you put it in the RFP exactly. and in yep. the deed all Absolutely. the way that runs yep. in perpetuity or yep. good. We've done that before. We, we've also in the past uh, specified that uh, whatever use is made has to conform to the zoning bylaws. Right. So uh, that's mostly to try to avoid 40B usages. Um, you want that as well? Yeah, yeah. you yeah. want everything. You yeah. got every yeah. bullet in the gun. Okay. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be great. So, any further comments from here? I mean, we're doing this a little bit backwards. That's okay, though. Getting information. We need a motion then to um, yeah. advertise for bids for uh, 138 New Salem Street. Do I have a motion? <coughs> second. Move and second the discussion. Discussion. So, just to be clear, so you put that when you advertise, you uh, you advertise. You know that there is an RFP and people come and pick up the materials and the materials right. have That's all right. the details. We, we advertise in the central register in the in the um, yeah. in the local paper. They pick up the packet and then if they want to have questions, there's questions. If they want to have a site visit, we arrange that. Cool. Any other questions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Still have time, so let's okay. go on to um, request from the Dolomite. I can't find anything on my. Sorry, just not. It's not here. Well, you just had it on the dollar amount. Library. Yes. Yeah. I move we approve the uh, the gifts to the library. <laughs> With thanks. Thank you. Um, <laughs> send the minute. I, send the notice. And, uh, I need a motion to uh, accept the gifts in the amount of seven. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As okay. noted in the uh, in the all in favor in the notice. <laughs> Aye. 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 All in favor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. I really want to see the minutes for this. I do too. I really do too. I mean, for the record, seven thousand four hundred eighty-six. Thank you. That's what I was trying to do. For the record, because I knew someone was going to ask the question. Uh, why can't I? Find? I'm going on the same page. Sherry, what number are we on, please? What number on, uh, would that have yeah. been on the? Uh, in the packet? Yeah, on the sheet on the computer. Because I'm I'm not in sync. Going the wrong way. What page is this? Yeah. Okay. okay. That one there. That was the one you just did. Okay, so now we're on. Yeah. Okay, so now we're on. Okay, okay thank you very much. Um, number seven: personnel appointments. Uh, we have a, um, a, an opportunity to make an appointment for the second member of the Wakefield Retirement Board. Um, in your package, you have two uh, applicants seeking the one position. Um, I'll entertain a motion from the floor as to um, which candidate they seek to move forward. Mr. Uh, May. I'd like to put a motion forward for uh, Chief Smith. Second. Motion was made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion to appoint Mr. Uh, Chief Smith to the position of um, Wakefield Retirement Board? I think Chief Smith understands our system. He's, he's been in it. He's worked with us for a long time. Um, so I'm happy with this appointment. <clears throat> I yes. just want to make sure with the town council that there's no conflicts with the, the position with him being police chief? No. No? Okay. Beautiful. I'm all for it. Let's do it. Very good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, you know the warrant review and signing, Mr. Longo? Um, signed a lot of local businesses. Uh, Avon Supply, Hearts Hardware, Blanchard's, Bill's Locks, um, Rec Courses. You know, the flu clinic, you know, bus service, the GIC, SPED services, sidewalk repair, trash fees. So that's it in a nutshell, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for your services, sir. Always, always welcome. Um, we have gone through our regular items. Let us uh, take on uh, matters not anticipated by the chairman within 48 hours of me. Let's go around the table. I'm going to start to my left tonight. So, um, my train ride made my brain all jumbled, so I forget some of, I think, what I was going to say. But um, I did, I talked to Steve earlier this week um, uh, about something that we sh I think we can think about in the future. I, I noticed that um, Lowell PD was advertising during the crazy cold weather that um, they had opened up their senior center for one of the nights for people to go for shelter whether it was homeless people, people whose heating had gone out. I then was talking to my um, very good friend who's chief of Weston Police. Weston is a different city than Lowell, clearly. Weston has had some homeless people show up because of the train, and they did the same thing. They, um, the police responded to make sure these people were safe. Um, I think it's something to think about that, you know, if we have other cold spells, that maybe there should be a plan to make sure that people are safe in our town. It wouldn't cost that much, I would gather, um, to throw a few folks in, in, in the senior center in someplace else. No alcohol, no drugs. There's all kinds of you know, rules. But it's something to think about, to discuss. If or I can. America, right? Sorry, or America, or, you know, throw a few cots at it. It's not, it wouldn't just be homeless people. But the, if they land in our town and it's minus 11 out, I do not have a problem <coughs> sheltering them for a night. I, I do want to point out that the fire chief did secure rooms at the two local hotels if awesome. we needed them. Yeah, if no, we needed right. them. But I, I think it's a great responded. suggestion, and as we move forward with yeah. emergency management and getting better, we'll certainly yeah. do that. Good. So, yeah. Very good. Good comment. Good. Anything else? I'm good. No, for now. Um, so I get to do some announcement updates. So uh, Sustainable Wakefield, a newer group in town focused on energy and environmental issues, has an enter to rooftop solar tomorrow at 7 o'clock at the Civic Center. Um, and then next Monday is MLK Day, the annual Unity Day celebration, Monday 10 to 11 at the middle school. 
Um, and then the one other thing I wanted to mention, um, we had great candidates for the retirement board, and I'm just going to encourage us to remember all the candidates as other positions come up in town. It was great to have the resumes. Chief Smith is great, but when we have more than one candidate, to remember them for future appointments. Thank you. That it? That's it. Yeah. Tony. Uh, just quick thanks to the DPW, uh, police and fire for the work on Thursday and on Friday. Uh, <clears throat> if um, you know, we all remember the word bombogenesis and would be no one had in the past uh, week or so. And uh, secondly, just a shout out to a local business to um, Melanson Oil that uh, a friend of mine had a heat go down over the weekend and they were right out there on Sunday. So thanks to them. Very good. Mr. Falvey. Uh, I'm pretty good. I'm just wondering, I know this was a big storm and like you said, <laughs> um, good job in the town, but um, I think a lot of the roads are still tight. You know, just even coming over here, the right turn going from Water Street to Farm, the right turn lane is like half plowed. Do we do like a yeah? They they follow, continue to go out a follow up yeah. where you go do clean up and we hit. I saw them today. We hit um, you know, bankings and corners, and as we go, we keep yeah. going, yeah. Because it's still really tight, and I think yeah. we get a little bit of love for the next few days, yeah. and then we go into uh, you know, the cement gets set probably next <laughs> Monday <laughs> until April, so uh, we get a chance to move it. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, all is well. All is well. Thank you. <laughs> you stole my thunder on that. That's Sorry. It's definitely tight thunder coming away. over. <laughs> definitely. Uh, another question. I think it's actually the state that handles it, but also even when you're going uh, out to 129 Rotary, there's still mountains. You know, as you're pulling out through each road, you know, you really can't see until you get your nose out there. I think that's the state. Um, yeah. Steve, would you say that? Yeah, we can. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll call Mass Highway. Yeah, just because that's another. It's such a busy intersection yeah. and it's so dangerous. Um, but no, just piggybacking on uh, Brian tonight, and that's that's it for me. We're going to backtrack to Mr. Fowley. I want him to come back to me, and then you can add on. Oh, you want to go back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And all I'm going to do is Unless add on good. to Ann. <coughs> so um, while you were talking about taking care of uh, those folks, there was a gentleman in the in the public, in the audience here, who I think wanted to speak on the matter. Is that true? <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, <laughs> if it's okay, I don't know. Do we want to hear from him on? And I know you need to be at a microphone, but I but also is it, know. Is it okay? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's awesome. fine. Have a seat. Hey, we're, we got, we're trying to kill five minutes anyway, so you're the beneficiary. So I apologize for doing that, but it, it seems but relevant. I also know you put out there that if any citizen saw someone in trouble right. or saw someone in need to call Wakefield PD and they would come assist. Right. Um, we did do that. And you know, I have to tell you that um, as far as the shelters go, um, Chief Sullivan and I work hand in glove on this all the time. Um, what happened was that we, as the storm started to increase in intensity and the temperatures started to drop bottom out, um, I had requested that we look into this a little bit deeper. Yeah. And uh, we got a hold of uh, the superintendent of schools, and she made available to us um, the high school, um, which is pretty much a, oh, that's a, an organized shelter yep. in this town. But we also um, reached out to DPW and we said we need the AmeriCal Center cleaned out. Mm -hmm. Because if we have to get in there, if somebody loses their power, it doesn't have heat, um, <clears throat> we have to get in there to put people up for the night or whatever it is. Um, so we needed the north side of the building opened up because that's handicap accessible yeah. so we can get people that are less mobile than i am to get in there so uh, and the other thing was we asked cpw to go down to the school to the high school right away and clean that out so that we could get in the back and we, we could care less right at that point in the storm it was raging pretty good about the front but we wanted to get into the back um so th you know that's pretty much what we do chief sullivan again last night um, later on, he put out a, an email that um, Mr. Mayo was referring to about both the Sheraton and the. Um, What's great? What do you call it? Lakeside Inn. Lakeside Inn. Um, <laughs> it's it's so many names up there. I just can't keep them straight. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll sure. But but nonetheless, I, I will. I and I will say, and I will back up to Friday uh, to Thursday night of the storm that the Colonial um, came to us um, the night of the storm and said that they had a reduced rate uh, for people who had yeah. a few pennies and were able to um, right. um, but anyway that's that's part of uh, 
that's part of Chief Sullivan's um, responsibility. And like I say, we, we're in the same building where we spend a lot of time talking about this stuff and, and making sure of that. So if the fur was to fly that night, somebody lost their, their power, their fuel, or whatever it may be, um, we were ready to go. Um, so Excellent. unfortunately, Chief Sullivan isn't here tonight, but I guess I'll blow his horn while he's yeah. not here because he did it. <laughs> he was, um, you know, and again, we talked last night about it, so. Um, but Thank anyway. you. That's yeah. great. That's great to know. Thanks, Chief. Very good. <coughs> Can I go back to my seat? Yes, sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> Thank you. We have a minute. Who, who wants to speak for a minute? Nothing for me, thanks. Wow. Well, I can do it. Go ahead. I can do it. Uh, next, uh, uh, after the public hearing. next meeting, um, we will be starting, uh, which is our our history, we'll be starting the, um, I'll call them the town hall department budgets. Um, so there'll be many individual budgets for every meeting from now until through April. So um, we will be sending those out to you. If you have any questions, please uh, come in, meet with me, uh, meet with Kevin, go over them. Um, we'll start with the easy ones before we get to the tougher ones. Um, so that was all good. Um, the other thing, really quickly why I have a minute, um, is that today um, uh, Chief Smith was kind enough to invite me to a uh, program that um, Marion Ryan, our district attorney, uh, gave at the um, vocational school, um, and uh, uh, Chief Smith spoke at it as well, regarding the Cut It Out program, um, which is um, a fight against uh, domestic abuse and looking at how can people in service in industries like salons, like dentists, like um, restaurants, can spot um, domestic violence, signs of domestic violence, and try to get people into an area where they can actually help themselves. I got to tell you, the students up there were fabulous. They were engaged. They were riveted. They were asked questions. Um, it's a fabulous program that's nationwide that um, uh, Marion Ryan has uh, adopted. And uh, we'll be taking this to the school department, because I'd like to see all of our kids see this, too. Because anything we can do to prevent um, this is, is, is really important. And, Chief Smith asked all the kids to look at each other today, look to your left, look to your right, and one of them would be a victim of domestic violence. So it's really incredible. So it was a great program. I was very proud to be there. So thank with you, that, sir. I think you can go into your... We can move into it and go back to the side. Yes. Okay, very good. So let us, uh, now 7.30, I would like to open up the uh, public hearing um, on the Chapter 138 concerning alleged infractions by impossible discipline of Dockside at Wakefield, Inc., DBA Dockside, your neighborhood family restaurant at 1099 Main Street. I need a roll call. I move we open the public hearing. Second. Second. Aye. Thank you. Yes. Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, public hearing is now open. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Mayo and uh, Mr. Mullen. I think that, uh, Mr. Chim, you may want to invite up, uh, well, I don't know how Tom wants to do it. Yeah, I think as before, we yeah. want to invite uh, Chief Smith up to make the presentation uh, concerning the, po the possible appropriateness of discipline. And then you want to turn to the, uh, the licensee and any witnesses um, the licensee may want to call. Okay, at this time, uh, Mr. Smith, <coughs> you come to the uh, podium, uh, uh, to the front mic. Good evening. Um, I, um, I'd like to start, um, and, and I'll be brief. I understand uh, Monday night, um, and I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll be brief, but but I, I, I do have to say that um, the focus of the police department here <clears throat> is to, um, when we get reports like this, is to forward it to the licensing authority and let them know what's going on. Um, I'm not the licensing authority. I understand my I understand my role, but I am the person responsible to make sure that the licensing authority understands um, some of the issues that we may have. This is the town where we talk about um, growing restaurants and growing bars and growing licenses. And I think that it's important, ever since we've put these uh, regulations in, um, and I do commend Ruth Clay and the health department for the work they did to pull this together and then start this ball rolling to make sure that we're all on the same page and the licensing was done in a fair and impartial manner. Having said that, um, ever since we've really started to look at licensing in this town, we've always kept an eye on violations or what we thought were violations 
are incidents that lead back to the serving of alcohol. So um, moving forward, back in November, um, and, and again, this is in the item of, in the realm of fairness. I just think that um, whenever we get in a situation like this and we get a report like this, it, it's fair for me to forward it on to this board and the licensing authority to make a determination. We don't want to put anybody out of business. We understand that. Um, you know, people have a right to make a living, should be making a living, but we also want to make sure that from the police perspective, the people are safe and that our personnel are safe, the people are safe, and that the licensed premise um, is treated fairly and understands when there are issues. So um, back in November, on November 4th, we get a call uh, on the first half shift, the evening shift, um, for two what appeared to be intoxicated people walking north on Main Street by J.J. Round Park. Um, our office, one of our officers, one of our sergeants was on a car stop, and these two people literally, according to his report, walked by, stumbled by him, um, attracted his attention. One of them was down on the sidewalk. Um, when the sergeant approached um, the male, um, there was a discussion. It was very obvious to the sergeant, who was a decorated Army veteran, he understood perfectly that the person he was talking to was extremely intoxicated. Uh, with him was a white female, and she was laying on the sidewalk. Um, and she was extremely intoxicated. So in conversation, um, the officers went immediately to try to render first aid to the girl, to the young woman, um, who rebuffed our, our advances, I guess, to serve her with medical attention. Um, she got very physical, she got very loud. He jumped in the middle of it, the male got in the middle of it, and as a result of that, the Wakefield police, we had to go hands on, we had to put our hands on him. Um, we had no choice, it turned into a wrestling match. Um, in fact, two people ended up going to the hospital. They were so intoxicated that the male went to the Merrill's hospital and the female went to the Winchester hospital because we couldn't take them into the PD and put them in protective custody and put them in a cell block. They were that intoxicated. So for liability purposes and in concert with 111B, the chapter that covers protective custody, it was best for our personnel to arrange with Action Ambulance to transport them to a hospital so that they get the medical care that they needed. Um, both parties were not charged criminally. Um, they were, from our perspective, just intoxicated. During our conversation with the male, um, in, the, in the very few moments that he was cooperative with our officers, um, he told us that he and her had been drinking at the dock site. They left the dock site and were walking north. Um, not being residents of Wakefield, we still have no idea where they were going, nor do they have any idea where they were going. <laughs> but nonetheless, we helped them along. Um, my position here is, is that I think it's important for us to notify the authority, the licensed premise of what's going on. And, and the reason I sent this over to Mr. Mayo is because of my concern, not only for the two people who we determined were incredibly intoxicated, who ended up going to the hospital, but for our personnel as well. Um, our personnel had to get into a wrestling match. Um, it's not like TV, and it, it, it's really not a good environment to be in. So that's why I forwarded, forwarded, forwarded this to Mr. Mayo so that we could at least make, um, put this in front of the licensing, licensing authority and make a determination on, on where to go from here. Um, again, they were not criminally charged. It was just a simple matter of being extremely intoxicated. And under the protective custody law, we took them into protective custody to protect them from hurting themselves any further than they already were. So um, she went to Winchester, he went to Melrose, and that was the end of it. Chief, can you just remind me what time it was? About? Yeah, <laughs> like 9 o'clock. It was, um, okay. actually, it was 10-19. Uh, okay. It was when we got 10-19 <laughs> when the sergeant yeah. was on the, on the car stop. You were wrong. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thank you. We, we actually did not get a call on them. I, I want to be clear about that. The sergeant was on the car stop, and they happened to come along and she fell down on the sidewalk. Did you find any alcohol on them? No. Nope. Any, Tony? 
Why weren't they charged? They weren't. They, there was no criminal offense. Intoxication. I mean, uh, that's not a, that's assaulting an officer? We, you know, yes and no. Okay. You know, this is a judgment call. Okay. And, you know, I have to tell you that the officers went out there, that were there that night. Um, I'm looking at their names right now, and um, these officers made, there was nothing to be gained by charging them. Okay. Um, yeah. These officers made an excellent call on this to make sure that they were safe, that was a priority, and get the medical attention. Um, I will tell you this, that if we had suffered injuries, if our officers had suffered injuries, it would be a different story. But we were able to um, get them settled and packaged up without any injuries for our officers. Taser. That's Twice. Right. Taser. Twice. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a corporate name. Oh. Electronic <laughs> control <laughs> weapon. <laughs> any other questions from the board for the chief? At this time, uh, we'll invite the applicant. Yes, I think you want to ask the applicant to step forward and yep. make any presentation they wish. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief. Oh, you're welcome. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Steve Grant. I'm the attorney for the Dockside. Uh, with me is Jack Ucheski, the owner of the Dockside. Uh, my office is actually in Saugus, Massachusetts, but I've lived in Wakefield most of my life. I have um, a packet I'd like to hand to each of the members. Uh, Ms. Clark, shall I hand them to you, or I'm happy to just... Yeah. Thank you. Um, a little background about the dock side, if I may. Uh, the dock side takes these matters very seriously. Uh, as you'll uh, see in a moment, and I was quite impressed, it has extensive policies and procedures in place to prevent these types of incidents from happening and to deal with them in the rare event that they do occur. And not only are these policies in place, they're, they're in practice. I think one example is very telling about the dock side is they've been open, uh, they opened its doors about 14 years ago now. And today, the average employee has been there 12 and a half years. And I think I, that says a lot about um, the consistency at the dock side. Keeps a level of consistency among its staff. Everyone is on the same page. And it ensures that there is um, uh, routines in place. In fact, they have daily, weekly, and monthly routines to ensure efficient business, of course, but also safety and compliance with rules. Uh, for example, for example, Lisa Ubicheski, the head manager at the dockside, is specifically certified trained to train the dockside employees on alcohol awareness. In fact, she's um, she had hired Alfred Hitchman, a former ABC inspector, investigator. And, and Mr. H uh, Hitchman helped set up the policies and procedures at the dock side regarding alcohol awareness. Um, regarding this particular incident, as is customary, once notified of the, um, of the incident in question, the dock side took um, upon itself to do an internal investigation. They didn't just sit back and wait for something to happen. They were very proactive. Um, I think this might be a good time to turn your attention to the exhibits I've handed out. Um, the first you'll see is a, an employee handbook. Every employee, <clears throat> upon being hired at the dock side, is, uh, receives this handbook, reviews it, and, and signs it. And there are 
relevant sections with regard to alcohol protocol in this handbook. I won't take you through every one, but if you, if you note on page 11, page 18, page 26, 27, page 34, for example, um, you'll see relevant sections pertaining to um, rules. For example, page 11, alcohol awareness policy. Um, and again, every, every dog side employee is given this upon employment. The next document in the package is the employee training manual. Again, every employee is given this. And there's a section, I believe, on page 29, designated for alcohol service. Again, every employee is asked and required to review this document uh, and sign it. At the end of every day, turning to the next document, the manager on staff fills out uh, a report. What went on at the night, were there any incidents that arose, um, any miscellaneous problems in the kitchen with customers, with guests. Here you're looking at a daily MOD report of the night in question, November 4th, 2017. Uh, you'll note that there aren't any references to irresponsible patrons or any incidents within the bar area or the restaurant itself. Um, and I've represented Dockside now for some time, um, and I've seen firsthand. If there are incidents, uh, they're in there. Um, every employee on staff at the night in question is made to fill out uh, forms on what they witnessed or what they didn't witness on a particular incident. Whether, whether they never saw it, whether they were right in the thick of it, everyone fills it out um, and, and gives it to uh, the manager the next day. The next document you'll see is a bar communication log. After every shift, every bartender on staff at the end of the, at the, end of the, at the, end of the shift is made to fill out this form. Often it's usually things like, um, we're out of glasses, we need, we need more stock or whatnot. And, up, uh, and on the rare cases, some, maybe some sort of a problem, again, with a customer or an employee, there, they would note it on this form. So you're looking at a, a form here from the night in question. Um, and again, you'll note that there aren't any, not, I don't think there's a single reference to um, any incident with Mr. Fredericks or any customer for that matter. Turning to the next document, this is another example of my client's thoroughness. If there is an incident report, I think I alluded to this before, this is the actual report, incident report, that every employee would be made to fill out um, if there was some sort of an unusual problem on the premises. And again, nothing on the night of November 4th uh, was supplied. On top of that, Every bartender employed by the dockside in Wakefield is required to fill out this policy on responsible alcohol service, and I've turned to the next document. In fact, the next two documents are examples of these. You'll note Jen Macaluso and Steve Fitzpatrick are the employees who were given these particular forms and signed them on the, date they, the dates they were hired. And I have... Um, Incidentally, Mr. Fitzpatrick and Ms. Macaluso here tonight. And you'll note there are 21 items pertaining to uh, various requirements, protocol with regard to serving intoxicated persons. Um, no more than, for, look at number 50, no more than two shots shall be served ever served to a guest. Um, guests under 21 must be accompanied by it an adult to sit at the bar. A lot of these are laws that we have in place, but if you look at m uh, many of them, there's examples of the dog side going above and beyond, playing it safe, uh, and making sure that they have a safe environment. And then I'll, I included the next document, this current bar staff, uh, for a reason. I, I think this is pretty telling as well. This is a current list of all the bartenders currently employed at the dog side. And if you note, many of them have been there. The first two were there from the day the doors opened. 
March 30, 2003. Um, several have been there. In fact, most of the lists have been there at least 10 years. I think this shows these employees have a vested interest in their job in the dark side. Um, if it wasn't a safe place to work, uh, I don't think the, they, they would have been employed there for that period of time. And I th again, I think it points to the consistency and familiarity that these employees have in, in their in their in their job. And I've met of a lot of these employees, and they take pride in working at the dark side. They earn a good living there, and they have a, an incentive for, for good business and a safe place to work, and one that complies with the rules. Turning to the next document, we have the, the regulations from the uh, Mass Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. This too, uh, believe it or not, is given to every dockside employee upon their employment. I think at this time it might be a good idea to um, let the owner of the dockside, Jack Ubicheski, explain his perspective from what happened that night, <clears throat> what he did about it. And um, Jack, go ahead. And when I received the notice um, um, of the violation, I think it was on Thursday I received on a Saturday, I called the meeting together, all the bartenders. Uh, first I, I showed them the report and the photo of the does anybody know this guy? Does anybody recognize the girl's name? Uh, someone said they recognize him, he comes in, never been a problem. Um, I then went over our procedures again. Also, the fact that they're liable if anybody did come in here and get overserved. Uh, they assured me that that was not the case. When I hired Steve Grant um, to uh, represent us here and in some other stuff at other places, um, he went ahead and took this report and he conducted his own investigation with our employees and he contacted the, um, what's this, Fred Fredericks? Kevin Fredericks. The Kevin Fredericks. And he spoke with Kevin Fredericks and I don't know the exact conversation, but at the end of it, he got a statement from Kevin, Kevin Fredericks saying that he was at the dark side, mm -hmm. but on his way from the dark side to, I believe, his girlfriend lived at 717 Main Street. He stopped off and picked up some fire bombs. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> at a liquor store, he purchased a, a sleeve of 10 fireball whiskey brand shots. And um, I guess they split them. He had five. And, uh, I, I imagine the girlfriend had the other five. But he told me personally um, that he drank those after leaving the dock side. And he wrote it in a letter, which I also gave to you in the packet here today. Um, you'll note, um, he said he had, uh, I think it was a, a few beers over 90 minutes at the dock side. Uh, and I guess they had a long walk home or something, and um, he says it was cold outside, and I don't think he's very proud of his decision, but um, I think it's, the proof is in the pudding here that this is really where he got intoxicated. Not at the dock side, but afterward. Yeah, so when I got this in, then Stephen and, uh, and Jen were worked that night when I spoke to them. Our cameras only hold for 30 days. The films, mm -hmm. I couldn't go back and look. Uh, but they assured me that uh, there was no way that um, they remember anybody getting overserved at that time on that date. And Jack, did you? Um, what steps did you take once you were notified of the of the incident? What steps did you take internally? Did you hold any meetings? Did you? Yeah, that Saturday. I mean, this came on a Thursday, I believe. That Saturday morning, at, I think it was like 10 o'clock, 10:30, or something like that. A meeting of all the bartenders. Everybody came into the meeting uh, just to find out what they knew about this, and and um, other than I had Stephen. That was it. But our policies have been in place for. A long, long time. We've been doing this since '79, so other than some revisions to them, there it's always been the same way. I'd also point out in um, in its 14 years here in Wakefield, uh, the dockside has had any major problems, and um, 
As far as I know, this is the first time in that time it's been before this board. Uh, I, I welcome you to, um, if you'd like to speak with or ask any questions of the two bartenders that were on staff that night. Well, let's see what we vote on the table. If we're going to need that at this time. So, uh, do you have anything else other than the? Uh, I would just say, in conclusion, um, I, I frankly feel that the thoroughness that the dock side takes and its policies and procedures is pretty persuasive. Uh, but I think uh, this letter alone um, is sort of the icing on the cake. Thank you. Mr. Falvey. Yeah, and, and thank you for the presentation. I think, um, you know, um, I know I asked uh, Steve's office, you know, what's the, the history of the dock side before this? And I think you're right. There's, there's been no history. It's a well-run establishment, well-known in the town, good corporate citizen, all of the above. So um, in an incident like this, um, my personal, I won't speak for the board, I'll only, only speak for me, my, my thought is um, probably the last thing you want to come out of here with is, is some sort of um, you know, punishment for a first time infraction over 15 years plus of being in business, or 15 years of being in business in town and doing everything well. Um, I'm not surprised, given your track record, that you've got a, you know, a hefty um, uh, set of documents and policies and that you do the right things and you said you own a number of establishments besides yeah. duck right so so you know how to run a tight ship and you know what it's not worth it to you anything other than run a tight ship so um, so kudos to you on that and a uh, great presentation um, with that said um, you know I guess I'll address the letter in a minute the, the other thing is uh, equally important to me is um, when our police department raises their hand um, uh, my my gut is that um, again I'll speak only for myself. This board's job is to support our police department. So um, obviously they had an issue here and said, hey, that this these people said they were drinking at the dockside. As as he mentioned earlier, um, his primary objective is the safety of the people in town, safety of the people they might harm, the safety of his officers and things like that. So I'm feeling the tone here, and if I can call it that, is. Um, not one of let's call it dockside in here and really grind them. I think this is a, a heads up call that this stuff goes on. Um, and, um, you know, it may or may not have happened that night. I'm sorry for saying that, but um, um, again, I don't think the mission here is to is to meet out some significant punishment. I prefer to um, again me only I'll let others speak. I prefer to take the discussion from. Um, defending dockside and, and almost this this is actually the my least favorite part of the whole thing this is like no no we didn't do it I'd almost rather have it say like hey we run a tight ship maybe some of these things slip through the cracks and and you know you can't you can't win them all but you guys obviously do a damn good job of it so I don't know if I love this just yet um, you know the guy says oh I, I wasn't there I stopped at Greenwood Liquors and grabbed you know a thing of shots I don't know I don't know if you're talking to the police if you Maybe you don't say, yeah, I went to the liquor store and bought a bunch of shots and um, had an open container walking down the street and admit to a whole lot of crimes. And maybe you just say I was at the dock side. So maybe you're right. Um, but uh, either way, I, I kind of almost want to take it out of the realm of let's, uh, it wasn't us, it didn't happen to, um, we run a good ship and, uh, you know, you know, can't win them all maybe. Uh, that, that's. No, I hear you. Thank you. <laughs> and I felt, and I did want to do my due diligence. And yeah. when he told me that, I would feel like I'd be doing my client a disservice mm -hmm. if, I, if I didn't. You, you have to present. No, I, I understand fully. But um, um, I saw all the stuff, and I was like, oh, this is, this is great, and it's in line with um, what I expected. Well-run place. And even if this incident were, if this is wrong and this incident occurred, it still doesn't change my, my view um, of how dock sides run. It also will never change my view of um, the support we have to show to our police department. So. Um, Thank you. That's it for now. But uh, so so hey, good job by you for running a great business. Um, it's it's a tricky one for sure, and your bartenders too. Yeah. Um, I was at the hearing, um, Jack. When you spoke, this was a handful of years ago when the Board of Health was proposing new changes for the alcohol policy, yeah. and I was very impressed with you were one of the only owners to say, "Bring it on!" Like whatever policies you want. What and there were some owners of businesses that were 
questioning whether or not um, some of the policies should be instituted. But I remember very specifically you saying, you know, we want to we want to comply with everything. We want to run a safe business. We want to do the right thing. So um, clearly, based on what I'm seeing in these policies, you've done that. So I'm impressed by that. I, I go along with Brian. We always want to protect our police officers. I think this is a tricky one. They were so far away from the dock side when they were stopped, you know. But I, I occasionally we just bring businesses in to say, hey, we got a complaint. Um, good job what you're doing, and keep it up and keep an eye on things. But I, I do remember you very specifically as being one of the only owners to say, you know, whatever alcohol policy you want to institute is fine with us. So I was impressed with that. Well, that's one of the things when I first got the notice, I got to let everybody know this is serious. And that's why I've had a meeting with everyone. That's why I paid to get a lawyer. I mean, we could have came in and did this on our own. But no, this is serious. And the not only to protect the interest, but it sends a message to all the employees. Sure. In case anything does happen, you're responsible for this. There is one, my memory, there's one uh, area, if, if a person serving someone uh, gets intoxicated, and they go out and they get in an accident and kill someone, that person serving them can be criminally sure. responsible. And we have that in part of our package, so we tell them all the time. You, we have monthly meetings. You can't do this thing. It's not worth it. So thank you, but that is part of it. Is it possible to talk to the bartenders? Please. If that's what you so right? desire. Do you sure. Mind? Please. Yeah, just a, how's it? Come on down. Thanks. <coughs> this is, again, Steve Fitzgerald and Jen Macaluso. Steve Jen. Thank you. Um, I, want to, I want to agree with, obviously, Anna and Brian, too, with that. Uh, Protecting the police, and uh, but also uh, you've been a good business in town. There's no incident, Steve or Tom or the chief. No one knows of any incidents with the dock side over the last 14, 15 years. Okay, so I mean a clean slate speaks uh, novels as well. Um, do you remember this Kevin and Fredericks? Do you remember him that night? Uh, briefly you, came in that night. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean you don't remember obviously him stumbling up to the bar and then stumbling out no. of the place. I mean, By no means, no. So, you know, you guys have served a ton of people over the time. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I just wanted to get a feeling from you guys, just one-on-one, -on -one so that the town can see also that, um, you know, you run a good ship and uh, tight ship, and also uh, uh, that you remember the, that night with this guy. And, uh, you know, he could very well have gone and got the 10 nips on the way back from wherever he went by. We won't name any establishments again, but he could have um, partaken on the way back. But, um, no, I think it's... It's um, it's a good good history that you have at the dock side. So I think uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks. I'll be brief. Um, I've been living in Greenwood for almost 20 years, and I was probably one of your first customers at the dock side. You do a lot for the community. I think uh, you know every WBA team has a a dock side sponsor. Little League has a dock side sponsor. So uh, to Brian's point, we're not here to you know beat you up or you know take your license away or fine you. Um, but this might be a great opportunity, a great teaching moment, maybe just to ratchet up. Um, you know, we are always going to back our police. I mean, that's just you know, the way it is here. But um, again, this just might be a great teaching or coaching opportunity to, you know, hey, you know, we are watching, the police are watching, and, you know, we have their backs. <clears throat> but again, thank you for everything you do in Wayfield, because like, every time there's a fundraiser for something, there's always a dockside, you know, gift card or gift certificate. And so you have been great neighbors, and uh, just continue that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, I'm just going to echo the same as the rest of my peers here. Uh, I've been on the board now for going on nine years, and I don't think I've ever heard a, a peep coming from anyone complaining <coughs> about the dark side and uh, what happens on inside their establishment. Uh, the packet was very impressive as to what they do with their employees and how they um, make sure that they account for themselves. Um, on a daily basis when they're serving alcohol to their patrons. So uh, again, uh, when something like this happens and is brought to our attention by the police department, we have to take you know into consideration their concern. But um, I feel that you're upholding this in this matter. Um, fine, you, the letter came in with information, additional information, but um, as Tony said, we're not here to, uh, you know, batten down 
hot on you. It's just that we got to make everyone aware within the town, every establishment that serves alcohol, you know, there's a fine line as to if the police get involved, we have to support the police department in their actions. Thank so, you. yes. I have a question for you. So you're in your discussion with this uh, Kevin Fredericks, I'm just kind of curious, like, What's in it for this guy to write this letter? Like he's got this debt issue. He he gets he gets in a, a scuffle basically, out of his mind with the police. He gets saved from the embarrassment of uh, getting arrested and all that. He gets taken to the um, hospital. It's over in his world. He he dodged a, he dodged a couple of bullets there. Um, um, a bar's lawyer calls him and he says, oh, I'll put my name out there. I'll put it in the public record with the uh, police and the, um, the board of selectmen. And, and, you know, I'm happy to write exactly what I bought and how many of them I drank and how stupid I am. I'm just kind of curious, like, why? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> what the hell? Why did he do this? Yeah. Well, for starters, I mean, I, I know he likes the dark side. He's literally a, um, a loyalty member. I don't think he goes there so often. But uh, when I explained to him the, the events um, and, you know, and, and the fact that we were being called before the town, he felt bad. And he said, that's, that, well, that's not right. I, that, um, I, I wasn't overserved. I had a, a few beers. We went on our merry way. And, you know, um, the whole night in question for him is just one big, awful mistake. I mean, obviously, it's not his favorite night. I'm, I'm sure he wasn't thrilled that I was trying to, you know, bring him back to that point in time. But, you know, he said, no, that. That's not how it went down, and you know, and um, I'll, I'll do whatever I can. Just um, you know, uh, and I asked him, would, you know, would you put it in writing? He said, absolutely. And uh, just today, he, he emailed me over the, uh, the letter. So. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I wish he was here. Uh, and also, I'm also glad he's not here. He works. He, he's, at, he's at his second job. He works. I think he works in Weymouth. Now he's at his job in Woburn. Um, I don't know, maybe it was a little bit of both. I, I, I don't know, but either way, look, and I'm, it, it's yeah. kind of, so, I'd love to talk to that guy. <laughs> maybe we'll get on the dock side yeah. and find him. So, <laughs> um, are you all set, huh? Yeah, I just want to ask what our options are as far well, as. Well, I, I want to see if the, if the chief has any additional comments he wants to make at this time. Yes, I do. Um, I'll get right down with nuts and bolts here. <laughs> this isn't this isn't about dark side. This isn't about um, who's a good guy, who's a bad guy, who's got a piece of paper. Yeah, I can write anything. You can write anything. That to me, the piece of paper. There's nobody here to testify to it, talk about it. Um, my point is safety. Mm -hmm. Okay. My point is, as long as I'm chief in this town, I'm going to be watching the licensed establishments. That's a, that, this board has tasked me with doing that, and I'm going to do that. And um, you know, I have friends at the dark side. Um, I know Jack very well. Um, it's not about the dark side. It's about someone who made a bad decision, who left, they, he admitted, not her, he admitted to us that he had been drinking at the dark side. Now, I'm not gonna get into a whole OUI discussion about how the distance traveled and how the body metabolizes alcohol and blah, blah, blah. And we can go on for that forever. Um, but I, I will say this is that, um, you know, they made their way to a certain point in Wakefield. One of them admitted that they had been drinking at the dark side. None of them admitted that they had stopped and picked up 10 fireballs along the way. That's brand new to me tonight. Um, whether that happened or didn't happen is not the issue here. My issue is safety. It's the issue of say, safety of the two people who we found intoxicated, the safety of the officers that work for the Wakefield Police Department. If they had stumbled off the curb and hit by a car, Guess what? By us doing our job, we just avoid a huge civil suit. And that's why we do what we do. So it's, it's more about safety. Um, and, and, you know, I know there's going to be another establishment coming in here in two weeks. And I'm going to tell you the same thing. I'm going to tell this board the same thing. It's all about safety and keeping Wakefield police officers safe, keeping the people that are involved safe, and keeping the licensed establishment working. Because you're a business in town, and I respect that. And I understand they have to make money. Um, so. What I want out of this is to understand, I think everybody understands, we're not children here, we all understand that the liquor business, the restaurant business is a tough business. And, but unfortunately, sometimes people make bad choices. And when they make bad choices, the Wakefield Police Department gets involved, and we're gonna get involved to make sure everybody's safe. So, um, you know, this, that's my goal, and that's what I'm thinking about here. And, and when 
I forwarded this up to Mr. Mayo's office. I, I did that specifically from the safety point of view. Um, um, and, and that's, that's, that's what we're going to do. We want to make sure at the end of the night, everybody goes home safe. Unfortunately, these two people went home safe, but they went to the hospital. <clears throat> Thankfully, our staff went home safe that night. They went to bed, that, hopefully, that night. So, you know, from my perspective as a police professional and as a police chief here, it's all about safety and keeping the people that, that come here to work, play, drink, eat, whatever they come here for, make sure that they're safe, they come here and they leave safe. So, you know, that's, that's really all I have to say, Mr. Chairman, but in your hands now. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Chief. Excuse me, Tom, can you provide the board uh, options at this time? <clears throat> Since we've heard that there's no history of uh, discipline under Chapter 138 for this licensee, uh, any offense that uh, your board found would be a first offense. And under Section 2053 of your board's regulations, uh, the penalty for a first offense in the discretion of the board would range from a warning to two consecutive days suspension of license. And so what, what does, um, so the step discipline there, what then, so if something else occurred after this, there would be a second offense. That's right. And is there some minimum there? Does that include a warning or is that automatically put that, you in something? That's right. And for a second offense occurring within two years of the previous violation, it's um, uh, three to seven consecutive days suspension of license. And no discretion to make it less than three? Not under your regulations. That's right. So, <clears throat> so the first option would be, well, first option would be no, nothing. first option One would be One of them is nothing and the other right. is a, a, a warning. I, nothing I would only consider a warning, but personally that would be, okay. if anything. If any, right. You know, I, I'm, and I don't doubt what Chief Smith was saying, but based on precedent in a hearing we had, Last year or the year before, which, yes. where I think the evidence was much stronger that connected the yeah. intoxicated person to the establishment, um, I would be, I think what's happening now is a warning, but not a real warning, <laughs> kind of like a shot across the bow. Um, mm -hmm. So it would be my, my feeling to not do an official warning. I just don't think we have it. It's the lawyer in me saying that. but. Um, and, it, that, and I'm not doubting one word of what Chief Smith is saying, nor what his um, officers went through. I think this is, you know, and if there is a second incident, we can treat it as a serious incident. You know, we don't have to start with a warning if something else happens. I'm hoping it never happens again. Um, so that would be my, where I'm coming from based on other hearings we have heard. Anybody else? So, so uh, uh, on the way that it would be right now, if, if we wish to fire the shot across the bow, we'd have to take a vote for that there was no infraction that, uh, at this point. Do we have to vote that there's no infraction? I don't think we have to vote that nothing happened. Wait, wait, wait. In order to issue a warning, yeah. you'd have to find an offense. Right. Okay. So then when we'd have to... Well, okay, then we'd find that there was... Right. So we'd have to make no. the determination. We didn't. That's not what I said. Well, no, my shot across the bow, I said, was just like a figurative, this is what right. the hearing is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. My right. argument, what I said, was that we would not vote to be an infraction, but people can right. I think that's agree what with I, that. Right. I, I, okay. Okay. That's where I was going. Well, that's okay. where I was going. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yes. I thought you said no, vote. No, no, no. Okay. Well, that there would be no action. That's what it was. So you would still have to, I'm being told we still have to vote one way or the other on I, moving. I don't think that's true. No. What would you just close the hearing and say we're all done, go home, no vote, okay. or should we conclude it with some sort of determination? That's the question. If your board were to issue any punishment at all from a warning up to two days suspension, you would first have to determine that there was an offense. Correct. Okay. So I don't want anybody to get the impression that a warning is so slight a penalty that it can be imposed even without a determination of offense. That's not the case. Okay. okay. All right, so we can determine that there's an offense and then take a vote on what to do about it and say we're not even going to issue a warning. No. 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 The, because the, the lowest penalty for a first offense is oh, a warning. Right, no, I think your options, 
It is a two-step process, as you say. First, is there was there an offense? Second, if so, what is the penalty? I would say that if you if you want to, you could take a vote about whether there was an offense. Uh, on the other hand, you could also just decide that you don't want to proceed any further and close the hearing without action. And we don't need a vote for that. Just close the hearing. You just need a vote to close, close the hearing. The hearing. Okay. So you have heard the two options but from the council. What is the choice of the board? Yeah, I, I, I'm hearing um, th this letter is a kind of a uh, – you can't ignore it. It's, it's amazing to me, actually. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out quite – I'll just be very transparent. I'm trying to figure out if this is a regular and, you know, this is a guy who's going to drink for free at Dockside for the next 10 years. <laughs> or, um, all right, that's what I'm thinking and wondering. So I don't know if you know him and uh, what's the deal and why the hell did he do this and, you know. He's got to, you know, uh, whatever. And so uh, I'm not, I'm kind of having fun with that, but what, I'm just very curious about that. So um, I have a feeling that the people were probably served a lot to drink at the dockside, enough that they were stupid enough to buy 10 fireballs uh, two doors down and continue to continue the party in the freezing cold walking up the street. Um, you know, the, I, probably whatever went on at the dockside screwed their judgment up to go make this subsequent bad decision. But um, th this, if this, if they did buy all these fireballs and fireballs and whatever, uh, certainly that would be kind of an intervening um, activity that, I, that probably, um, I don't know, in my mind, decouples kind of what went down with the police from 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 dockside. At least it makes it hard for me to say. If, if this weren't here, I'd say warning. Yeah. All right, but with this, it's a tough call, and um, I'm inclined to say uh, all of you folks here on your time, having the meeting you had afterwards to talk about it, the torture of hiring a lawyer, I'm a lawyer so I can say that, um, <laughs> um, uh, is probably adequate enough. Uh, we spent a lot of time on it here tonight. Anybody watching our newspaper will report on this. Um, safety is number one message it's heard loud and clear so i'm inclined to just close the hearing would be my i'd be okay with that do i have a second to close the hearing i don't have i didn't make a motion make a i just, just expressed to what okay. i'd be interested in doing do we have a i would like to make a motion to close public hearing do i have a second on closing the public hearing second there's been a motion made and second is there any discussion further on closing the hearing all in favor say aye aye, yes. aye. Roll, call. roll call to Aye. 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 Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Jack, right. thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, so there's only one item left, and that is uh, my round table, and then we can do the motion to adjourn after that. So let me briefly go through a couple of items. Um, that I would like for consideration. At one of our next meetings uh, soon, um, I would like the board to uh, consider re-looking at our current um, rules and regulations regarding hawkers and peddlers and the requirement to have them move from place to place every two hours and to consider either removing that completely or making it greater than two hours. It's, it's not something that we are currently enforcing, okay? It was something that was created several years ago based upon a concern. I don't think the concern exists at this point, and it's affecting people wrongly. So um, I, I would like to have that as an item for us to discuss um, at one of our meetings to, for consideration to um, look at the requirements that we set by our board um, for the zoning uh, bylaws um, to make people move. And at the same time, we might as well look at the uh, requirements for special permits for, um, um, was it, uh, hawkers and peddlers and, and how they are enforced. The other issue on this right now is uh, there's been a complaint, at least to me, by those who are in the florist business that um, when we allow, and the town allows um, establishments to set up shop with flower uh, for sale for Easter and that on, on property, how is that being allowed and whether or not it has an impact on the existing florist 
who are legally open. Are we allowing it, or is the private business yeah. that is hosting? Well, uh, the it's enforceable. To, it's it. enforceable through us, if I'm not mistaken. I think we can prevent it. That's right. That's. Uh, I'd, I want to look at that seriously because that is not my understanding when this issue has come up before with regard to the florists. Again, so when we have that discussion at one of our next meetings, I would like that to be uh, considered as well, too, and uh, to find out whether or not there's any information to back it one way or the other. Um, the other I I issue, um, uh, which was already brought up, was uh, thanks to the DPW regarding their uh, snow removal. Um, they've been doing a great job working on it. There's a lot out there to move. There are certain corners that are still to be done. Um, my concern would be to re uh, get the culverts cleared as well, too, because if there's rain coming this weekend, the water has to go somewhere instead of pooling back out in the street because... Or your, your yard. No, my yard wouldn't be pooling, but it, they're talking about the temperature going back down to 25 yeah. two days later, so it, skate rinks will develop. Um, the last thing, which wasn't on the agenda, but uh, it will be starting uh, January 15th. Uh, th through the town, through this board, we are introducing what was called Wakefield Wingo. It's a, um, a, a game that will be um, issued... Uh, game cards to all the surrounding businesses and um, it be a way for the businesses during these cold seasons to entice people to go into their businesses and shop uh, for the upcoming months. So it would run from January 15th to March 15th. Uh, there are several prizes that are being developed that would be for the winner. Anyone that can put five in a row would be able to enter. There's rules and regulations on the back. There's a meeting tomorrow morning with the merchants to explain how this is all going to work. It's, again, this is just another avenue for us to uh, promote the businesses in the town during the hard times. So um, I think that is all I have for tonight. Um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Can I add something? Yep. I right. forgot. Sorry. We last met a while ago. I just wanted to mention... Um, in December and November, there was some hateful graffiti found in our schools. Um, and the administration and Chief Smith, who's still here, um, had a meeting that uh, Tony and I went to with concerned parents and the administration. And it was a great meeting. Um, and I, um, I'm happy and uh, proud of the work that the police department and the administration is doing to make sure things like that don't keep on happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I am looking to you, Chairman, about ways that we as a town can kind of address it and talk about tone. You know, we're talking about our support of the police department and the establishments that we have in town. And I think it's just as important to have that message when it comes to hateful acts, hateful words in our town, um, regardless of whether they're just in the school department or not. So uh, something for us to continue talking about okay. and addressing. Very good. Very good. I will figure, I'm sure that you will work with Steve to get something that we can move forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would love to, you know, if, it was a great meeting and to have a follow up, uh, follow up meeting, maybe we have uh, Chief Smith and Superintendent Smith come and talk to us about what they're doing. It would be great for the whole town to hear about that and for us to hear that as well. Very good. I don't know, Tony, if you had any other ideas. I know there's a group, maybe we get the wake up of committee involved. I've been very involved with them as well. I know that, uh, Steve, I think you had, there's a high school, um, what is the high school committee that you had talked about on your recent town administrator show? Oh, um, I do watch that sometimes. You do, you're, you're the, the only one. one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one viewer. I do <laughs> yes. It was the uh, young, the young, um, <clears throat> politicians, young Democrats that I met with over there. Okay. Maybe we could have yep. them talk to yep. a junior. You know, a yep. high school kid is going to have a lot more impact on a junior high school than, you know, probably yep. than we would. So. Any other comments from the board? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.